Hey guys, it's Gary Dean. Uh, welcome to DetailJuice.com and my YouTube channel. And uh, I just appreciate each and every one of you guys that watch my videos, that show your support uh, for my product line and, and what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm working on a 2010 Porsche GT2 right this second. Um, I just got done with this Lamborghini Gallardo interior. Uh, it's got white leather inserts and I cleaned all the leather and conditioned it to get pretty dirty pretty fast when you use the car. Anyway, I'm working on this Porsche GT2 and as you can see, maybe, there's a nasty scratch that goes from here all the way over to there. Um, let me see if I have a flashlight in this sack of poo. Uh, I do not. However, I will use my phone. Um, so, the point here that I'm trying to make is that people call me all the time. And they say, hey, I've got a scratch. Can you take care of it? I don't know what you can see in this video. There's a scratch. You can see it right below the light. So, like I said, the issue is that people call me and they say, I've got the scratch, I need you to come fix it. Well, they don't understand what it takes to fix something like this, especially when you can feel your, th your thumbnail in the scratch. That means it's pretty deep. I do know that this car had a scratch in this area uh, not too long ago and he was in the presence of another detailer who sanded that area and then polished it back out. So I know that this corner of the door is a no-no spot to get into. I think it's the, the risk to reward is too great on a negative situation for me to sand this at all. Because of my experience, I can look into the paint and I can see that there is a little bit of depth left and I believe that I can do something for it. Um, so I'm gonna use what I think will do a decent job, not the most aggressive job, not the, the least aggressive job, but something I know that's gonna get a little bit of work done and you'll also notice, I'm hoping that you can see this, there's a lot of dirt in that scratch. So once you smooth out the edges, the chalky edges, because that's the reason scratches look white and chalky initially is because those edges are jagged. And once you smooth those down, it clears them back up again because they're generally in the clear coat if, um, if you literally can't see either the difference in the contrast in the paint color or even uh, see primer or metal underneath. So as far as the dirt goes, I can remove the dirt and make the scratch look a lot better. Uh, I can also smooth out those jagged edges and make it all clear again. Now there'll still be a valley uh, where the scratch is, but we can make it look better and not really have to worry about damaging anything. Um, Again, I'm jumping to something, I'm jumping to a combo that I know will work. I've got my uh, four inch buff and shine foam pad in my pocket here. Also have my Harbor Freight DA. You guys know how much I love that. And I've got infinite cut right here on the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just do a couple quick passes just to see if that's going to do anything for me. I'm going to set you right here. Right here on the Lambo. On a microfiber towel. See if we can get some results here. So, center the pad on the backing plate. I do sell these pads and this backing plate on DetailJuice.com. I'm using Infinite Cut, of course. I only use my products from DetailJuice.com. I do not use anybody else's products anymore because I don't need to. 
I get the best results with products that I developed. So, and I forgot I poured control clip again. My fault. So I'm just gonna go from one side to the next and use medium pressure, three, three quick passes, just to see where we're at. We're gonna do speed five. And then we'll inspect. see that that wasn't doing a whole lot of work. However, it was doing a little work, which that's pretty cool. We're getting a little bit of results now. So, wipe it clean. Inspect. Feel it a little, little bit. I can feel that it laid down those edges really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it another shot. I'm going to be slightly more aggressive with the pressure. Um, again, right over the scratch. You want to go relatively slow. Looks pretty nasty. I got the edges out. Each side had uh, a lighter area where whatever hit it went in and then came back out. So I'm going to do one more and then I don't think that there's much more I can do. that's not the dirt inside there. I believe that that's all the way down to the color. I don't think that I can do anything more with that. It does not look good. I'm going to stop. You got to trust your gut and my gut says no more. So the black area, I don't know if you can see the black area, or not black, it's like a dark red. I can, I can see that I physically moved that clear coat out of my way and I'm flattening it out because the valley of the center is much shallower than it was before. I can see that because of the reflections, but I can also see that that scratch is really deep and it makes me uncomfortable to do anymore. So I flattened it out, I removed any dirt that was in there and I also fixed the jagged edges so now it's clear. Uh, but that's, that's all she wrote on that. You, you just don't want to do too much. I think that when I was getting into paint correction 
and you know got the hang of it a little bit I was far more willing to go farther than I should have you know you get an ego about you and yeah it, like the whole world just explodes but um you know I damaged my share of paint when I was getting started and realistically you don't know how far you should go or shouldn't go until you've damaged some paint I mean that's the reality my recommendation is you don't work on a 200 plus thousand dollar supercar uh, to hone your skills in. You go buy a, a, a panel from a junkyard and get some uh, jack stand, or I'm sorry, and get some uh, saw horses and, and put the panel on that. You know, strap it down from underneath so it's solid uh, and then start testing different things. I can tell you that Infinite Cut and Infinite Finish are my products from my line. Infinite Cut cuts a lot. Um, or it doesn't have to. It's pad, it's variable by, the amount of cut is uh, variable by the pad and the pressure that you use. Uh, I do uh, pretty much all of my testing with the Harbor Freight DA. I just think it's a workhorse. Uh, the torque is amazing. I really like that polisher. You can't beat the price and the fact that if you ever have one die on you, which I have never had one die when I was in the middle of a job and the only time I've ever had one even break on me is when I dropped it. So um, they work really well. They're dependable and like I was trying to mention, it, the best part about it is you literally can go to Harbor Freight, which they are all over the country, and pick one up wherever you're at. Um, that's the coolest part for me, is I can just walk into a, a local Harbor Freight store and pick up a new polisher if I need to. Um, so that's a big plus for a, a pro detailer. I can also tell you that I've been removing wet sanding scratches with, the, with, with a DA, not necessarily the Harbor Freight DA, um, for years. I mean, you can do... The same things you can do with a rotary or a large throw DA machine with a small throw polisher, it just takes a little bit more time if you don't have the experience to, um, to work it like I know how to do. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. You need to be concerned about the aggressiveness of the combination that you're using, not necessarily only the compound. I mean, because the compound can only do as much as the pad and polisher and speed and all of that you're using. So it's it's a system that gives you what you're looking for when it comes to cut and even finish for that matter uh, with the pad, polisher, polish, and pressure combination. So varying using one product like Infinite Cut or Infinite Finish, you can get a variety of different results by just varying the pressure and the speed of which you're polishing. So uh, my recommendation to you guys would be knowing paint correction is a good idea. You should know how to do it. Um, I would recommend highly not focusing on that because there's far more money uh, in my experience in the maintenance programs that you can set up uh, and those lower end details. Uh, there's also more job security in them. Uh, but knowing paint correction is very important. <clears throat> you want to be able to do those jobs if they're presented to you. And I'm not saying don't go after those jobs. I'm saying don't forget about the maintenance. Don't forget about the smaller jobs. Um, and that's important. I mean, ultimately, the customer has money to pay for a job. You need that money in your pocket as a pro detailer. So try to try to figure that out uh, as best you can. Uh, I'll do more videos on that kind of thing. But this particular video was on you know localizing your paint correction and trying to remove a scratch. And you can't fix it all the time is, a, is the point I'm trying to make. I knew that I wasn't going to be able to fix this completely before I even started tackling it and that's why I'm shooting this video is the customer's expectation is not always reality and you need to bring them down from that sometimes and uh, explain that if you go any further they're going to have to repaint a, pa a panel. Not only is that bad for resale value but it's bad if you do the damage because then you're responsible for it. So uh, you trust your gut and if you don't have a ton of experience in this, I would not trust your gut. I would be buying panels 
from a junkyard, make sure that the paint is not flaking off, but as long as it's got solid paint on it, uh, bring it home, put that bad boy on some uh, saw horses and start going to town. Try different variations uh, of, of pads and pressure and speeds with the polisher and uh, do your own testing before you test on a car and potentially have to pay for a mistake that you shouldn't have made. So uh, if you got any questions, I'm always available uh, to assist you guys in your detailing endeavors. 813-846-4406 uh, is my cell. What other product line manufacturer gives you his personal cell phone and um, you know believes in customer su support the way that I believe in it? There isn't any. So again, I appreciate your time. Um, you know, your trust, your support. Uh, check out detailjuice.com uh, for all your product needs. Uh, if you got any questions about my products, again, let me know. Uh, if you want my services, give me a call on that same 813-846-4406 uh, cell phone number. Uh, but if you want to be a part of something bigger than detailing, uh, check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we focus on just my products uh, and my processes. So again, thanks. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful day.